Anyone who is fully vaccinated can participate in indoor and outdoor activities, large or small, without wearing a mask. Breaking news! The science changes overnight. Even Uncle Joe gets to go outside without his mask. Most excellent healthcare dudes. Plus, Fauci becomes a punchline. Bill Gates gets divorced. Klaus Schwab gets really old. And America starts to wonder if the fear pimps can actually pull this off. All that and more tonight from the editor's desk. The rule is very simple. Get vaccinated or wear a mask until you do. <laughs> that's that's just creepy. I mean, I guess that's why they call him Creepy Joe. That struck me as kind of creepy. In fact, it reminds me a little bit of this guy. Get vaccinated or wear a mask until you do. Okay, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Mack coming to you once again from the offices of the Remnant newspaper, wishing you a happy National Police Week. We're actually going to be backing the blue this weekend here at Remnant TV, thus the shirt. I will explain that at the end of the show. Creepy Joe, by the way, he, he, he did have more to say. He ordered those of us, I think, I think I understand what he's saying. I'm not sure. Of course, it's Joe. He ordered those of us who wear masks to be patient with those who wear masks. Be patient with one another. You know, some may say, just feel more comfortable continuing to wear a mask. They may feel that way. So if you're someone with a mask, you see them, please treat them with kindness and respect. Okie dokie, Dad. And by the way, do I still need to wash my hands every 30 seconds for 20 seconds or whatever that was? Remember, keep cleaning those hands with soap and water. Do it often, and do it for 20 seconds. Yes, Mother. Friends, you know, the fear-mongering that they've been working on ever since they first told us to be afraid of our hands. Remember, the virus is on your hands. you got to be afraid of your own hands. It's been going on for so long, but i got a feeling now it's beginning to fall apart a little bit. And now the Nazis are just bringing on the real cray-cray. You must get vaccinated today, or you will destroy the thousand-year-old Reich. It's must gain. Schnell, schnell. It's vaccinated or masked. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Whatever, Adolf. You know, but I would remind you, mind fewer, that the gas is running out on the East Coast, that there's a meat shortage, there's a chicken shortage now, a southern border crisis, race wars, burning cities, war in the Mideast, climate change, the sky is falling, viruses in the mosquitoes. <laughs> And you're still worried about the face diapers. And this guy is still trying to keep us afraid of a virus with a 99.9% .9 recovery rate. They got rid of Donald Trump, and now our stepdad appears to be stone cold drunk. <laughs> Sprawled out in his easy chair with the DTs going, babbling incoherently. We're also going to be getting vaccines to farm it for to pedi pediatricians and family doctors. I'm encouraged not just because of a solid meeting with um, with uh, the uh, Republican leader in the House. Generically, I'm encouraged. This guy has access to the nuclear codes. <laughs> And then the fear. Let's talk about the fear for a moment, friends. Because I know, you know, they lifted the mask mandates here in Minnesota. And we have protests going on. Mothers out in the street protesting the fact that their eighth graders are certainly not going to be allowed to go back to school, not with the mask mandates being lifted. It's unsafe, these moms are saying. Now, this is terrifying. This is a psyops. This is psychological warfare going on. People are terrified still some people and let's not forget what they did first when they got really serious about scaring the hell out of us they shut down the churches very calculated wasn't that now why did they shut down the churches 
Well, the easy answer, of course, the short answer, because they're communists, and that's what communists do and have always done. From the establishment of the Soviet Union in 1922, communist leaders sought to eradicate religion. Churches were destroyed, and the faithful were watched and persecuted. And the author of the Communist Manifesto, he put it famously this way, religion is the opium of the people. Guess what? I agree with Karl Marx on that to an extent. Religion does lift people's spirits. It does make one feel better about the situation that they're in. It also reorients people. It makes people immune to cheap political scare tactics. You know, churches, you go to church, why do you go to church? Churches are where people have gone historically for a couple thousand years when they're afraid. They go to churches when there's war, when there's famine, when there are plagues, right? Now, if you internalize, which is what religion, the opium of the people, if you internalize the reality of death that religion can help you do, then those who are threatening you with death, the, thr the prospect of death, which they've been doing to us for 18 months, they lose all of their power over us. You see why they got rid of churches first? They locked up the churches first? That makes perfect sense that these fear pimps kicked off the COVID thing by intentionally depriving us of what they called non-essential services inside churches. And what do they want us to do instead? Well, they wanted us to hook up to the TV set every night where we were sure to stay terrified, afraid, where we will never, ever do what this young lady did. There's too much virtue signaling going on and not enough virtue. I am so tired of people shoving the shot and face coverings down our throats. Stop using your platforms to install fear. The lack of respect for people that choose to not be an experiment or choose to not smother themselves with a face diaper coming from people that promote my body, my choice, is astounding. If I had to choose between getting the shot and jumping out of a plane without a parachute, I'd say gas that plane up, baby. No one's telling you you can't mask up. No one is telling you you can't get the Fauci out, so stop demanding me to. If you're still scared, stay six feet away. Life's too short to live my life the way you want me to in order to make you feel comfortable. It's been over a year. I'm not responsible for your fears. I'm going to trust my immune system and allow my body to do its job while you stuff your face with free donuts for getting a shot in order to be healthy. That sounds like a bigger issue. I'm tired of being lectured about caring for others by people that wish me dead in the same sentence. It's not my job to make you comfortable, and it's not my job to keep you healthy. Stay out of my business. <laughs> this girl's great. And there's so many people. This is the thing. Take The takeaway from tonight's show is that there are millions of gifted young patriots like that woman all across the country. What does history show us? When young patriots stop being afraid of tyrants like this, well, they can do a lot of things. We watched a few years ago when I was young, we watched them stop a tank and start a revolution. There are millions in this country who have had enough of the fear-mongering. They've stopped being afraid. Which, golly gee, isn't that something? All of a sudden, the CDC has suddenly decided to change the science. You know why? Science didn't change. Nothing changed. We got more vocal. We've had enough. Because remember what they were saying last week about this. Even if you're vaccinated, you need to wear the mask. Even if you're dead you need to wear the mask. They were never going to take the mask away because it's a symbol of their power and authority. It's always been that's never had anything to do with your health. But all of a sudden, that's all changing because we stopped buying their crap. Enough of us stopped buying it. And that's what we do out on this show week after week. Don't forget how many of us there are. They do fear an awakening on the part of those of us who have had enough of this and who have never, never bought into it in the first place. And someone once said, some wise wag once said, the truth is like a lion. It's, you don't have to defend it so much, just set it free and it'll defend itself. That's what's happening right now. And I told you on this show, right here, many, many times, don't let them be demigods, the demigods that they think they are, the demigods they think they deserve to be. Don't let them do this. Stay engaged. Stay on the field. Keep fighting. Don't just watch an endless list of videos that tell you how powerful they are and how much we're going to lose and how terrible it is. We don't have a chance. Yes, we do have a chance. 
We've seen these lunatics before. History is littered with the bodies of these lunatics and their causes that never went anywhere. And this one's going to the same place. Little men who want to be gods. It's not going to work. So what are they going to do? They're getting desperate. <laughs> you know, that's why they're treating us like cattle. That's why they're trying to herd and prod us into the corrals. Don't ask questions. That's not scientific. Get them off Facebook. Cancel them from YouTube. They're asking questions. Just keep them moving. Keep them scared. That's how this thing has worked from the beginning. When people are seeing through it. They want to treat us like prisoners. They use the dang term. Lockdown. What is that? That's a prison term. How much more obvious does it have to be? They locked us down. Take your clothes off. Open your mouth. Stick out your tongue. Do what you're told. And maybe, maybe... If you cooperate and you have good behavior, we'll let you wander around for 10 minutes out there in the garden. It's not real. None of this is real. They just keep popping up scary little monsters that scare the hell out of everybody. Oh, you're going to die from this. You're going to die from that. We're going to take you down. you got to do this. got to do that. It's like a constant game of whack-a-mole. This is intentional. There's no logic. There's no reason to this. Because if they can make you do stuff and jump through their hoops when it makes no sense to your reason, to your mind, that's the ultimate power for them. They can do anything then. So yeah, shut the schools down in one state, open them up in another state. Open Costco, shut down the churches. Mask the little children, God knows why. Vax the babies, God knows why. Just stay afraid. And while we ride this crazy horse to nowhere... They nix the Constitution. They turn the U.S. of A. into an Orwellian technocracy, which Patrick Wood <laughs> admirably describes. This, this is social engineering, not science. They're just bullying you. So you, those of you who are living over on, on the left-hand side of the country, you may think that you're all smart and science stuff and just following the rules so you can go back to normal. But actually, you're just being manipulated. Just like guys like me are being bullied for not complying with what they're saying. You see? So you can think you're all superior to me if you want, but at the end of the day, all they're doing is controlling both of us, all of us. That's all they're doing. So they can replace capitalism with technocracy and set up a new world order. Do you really want that, you folks on the left? I don't think so. You really want to lose your country, your way of life? Really? Is that what you want? You want cities that don't have any police in them? You want to make it, have them make it illegal to drive a car. You never want to have a burger again made of beef. Really? This is what they're, I was going to say promising you. What I should say is this is what they're threatening you with. And you think you're following the science? Research this. Because it's the same garbage, friends. The same maniacal little stuff that Hitler was working on and Stalin was working on specifically. Whether it's David Rockefeller's Trilateral Commission or Jeffrey Sachs's Sustainable Development Goals, just a new name for the same thing. And it's all about control. It's all about the end of the nation state. It's all about the end of places like the United States of America. It's all about the rise of technology based new order where globalist corporations will control everything including what you think and what you do and what you what, what you wear and when these corporations will make it really clear that god is dead by the way religion's going to go past by the wayside in the great reset the new normal will have no room for god in it <laughs> or morality or law in order you can see it happening right now. Now, again, everything I say is what they're trying to do, not what I believe they can pull off. It's what they want to do, and there's a big difference because of us. And when I say us, I'm talking about millions of Americans. I'm going to put up with this. But think about it. We have an example of how this is going to work right now. The mask mandate has been lifted. Hallelujah, isn't it happy? Now, how is that going to be enforced? <laughs> how are they going to figure that out? What are we going to be on the honor system? You walk into your, your, your grocery store and they say, hey, you got, uh, you got to put a mask on. You're going to go, hey, you know what? I've been vaccinated. And they're going to say, oh, sorry. Great. Good enough. I, don't think, I think our, our society has kind of moved beyond that level of trust. So how are they going to monitor this? How are they going to enforce the lifting of the mask mandates? Well, I'll tell you one thing. Government won't be demanding. Have you noticed this? Government's not demanding. Biden's not demanding that we have vaccination passports. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that nice? But the corporations are. That's how this is going to be enforced. 
Klaus Schwab, he calls it stakeholder capitalism. Business finally is moving to accept the stakeholder principle. And we will publish at the beginning of next week a book on stakeholder capitalism. The new kind of capitalist pig. See, they've redefined capitalism. I mean, into their own image and likeness. And they're teaming up with the United Nations to form a quasi-governmental organization that will rule the world. And it's going to be power, more powerful than government. And you can see it right now with the vaccination passport. I don't want to talk about that. They don't need one. Because you won't be able to buy, sell, you won't be able to fly if you don't have proof. If they don't allow you to get on their airplane without the mask, it doesn't matter what the government's doing, right? And that's how it's going to work at every level. And to get this done, they need to keep us afraid. They need to make sure we don't ask too many questions about this. Stay afraid. And by the way, while they're at it, let's make the President of the United States look like a complete idiot. For those who see it, and that is a huge question, about 95% of people probably only see 10-second sound bites of the President daily. So most people won't see him struggling and losing his way. But whether this is covered or not, Laura, it's deeply concerning. And the more people see it, the more concerned they'll become. Here is a largely unseen moment from today that tells a much bigger tale. You guys are bad. I'm not supposed to be answering all these questions. I'm supposed to leave. But... I'm supposed to. I'm not supposed to. You're the president of the United States. Yeah, so it begins to seem like no one's in charge. And when no one's in charge, eventually we're going to, we're going to start looking for someone who can take charge. And that's what they want. Everything going on with Biden is absolutely intentional. This senile old guy. It's very sad. It's abuse of the elderly. But it's intentional. So these folks have the power to do these things. I'm not minimizing their power. I'm not dismissing it. It's serious. It's frightening. It's going to get bumpy. <laughs> They're not going to give up easily. They shut the whole world down. I don't know how many zeros you put on the end of the dollar amount. A zillion dollar enterprise this has been to shut the world's economies down. They got a lot of power. I'm not, I'm not saying they don't. So in the meantime, we got to prepare. We got to start thinking smart. We got to think about how easy this thing could be tipped our way, the way of truth, the godly way, the patriotic way. Donald Trump, the businessman from Manhattan, just about knocked it on its lower spinal extremity, and he still might. And that could happen. Something like that could happen in 2022, 2024. We don't know what's going to happen. But the point is, Donald Trump almost took him down. The point is, we're taking him down. Guys like Rand Paul take Tucker Carlson out there every night taking chunks out of them, right? We gotta, we gotta think about the, the assets that we have, the advantages that we have. Use them. Have confidence in them. Have confidence in God. Get smart. Think independently. And for goodness sakes, get out of their Nazi indoctrination camps. Educate your children at home. I've been banging that drum for years and years and years. People say, that's impossible. No, it's not impossible. If you hand your kids over to them, you're gonna lose the kids. And the whole counter revolution that we're talking about is gonna be seriously crippled. If we keep sending generation after generation of the good people's kids into Nazi indoctrination camps called public schools. And I got seven children. I'm not a great educator. I'm not a saint. <laughs> but they're all homeschooled and they all kept the faith. The oldest, my oldest two children have already graduated college, graduated university. They were socialized just fine. They got friends. They've kept the faith. They're becoming what they want to do with their lives. They're following their careers, their vocations. One of them is standing right here on the other side of that camera, my son. You see, it's not rocket science. You just got to decide you want to try it. You want to do it. We can't just keep handing these, <laughs> our children over to these people. And be wide open. You're just starting out. If you're a young couple, just, just starting out. Forget about natural family planning and contraception. Have the kids. Be wide open to life. And let God take care of the rest. And believe me, he does if you're generous and open to life. And then teach your children. If you're a little older, teach your grandchildren. The old stories. Teach them about the Vande and the Cristeros and the people who fought back in times like this. Show them how it's done. Teach them how to do it. Teach them to trust in God. <laughs> and to stop being so afraid. Stop with the fear. Sometimes I worry, like I said last, last program, there's so many videos coming through that make the enemy seem invincible. If that's what those videos are doing that are supposedly exposing all the evil, if they're making you feel discouraged and crushed, incapable of fighting back, then stop watching those videos. You know, because fear accomplishes nothing. 
People say, what are we going to do? What can we do? Here's the first thing we do. We stop being afraid. And then we look around. We look at the good news. We look at the allies that we have. Look at the good news all around you. <laughs> you know, the, the stuff that, that Facebook bans. Like that the vast majority of every single person who got COVID over the past 18, the vast majority of them are just fine. They're alive and well, fully recovered. I see it on Facebook all the time. Somebody will come by and say, I got COVID. Oh man, pray for me. It's going to, and I think, okay, I'll pray for you, dude. But you know what? You're going to be fine because everybody's fine. Sure enough. A few days later. Oh, thanks for the prayers. I survived COVID. Okay. Well, I think that most, <laughs> well, I don't want to be, I want to be irreverent, but I don't even know how much prayer it requires to survive this thing anymore. Everybody survives COVID. With the exception of the poor older people, people who are already sick with comorbidities, we've gone over this so many times. Yeah, it's, it's really hard on them. And I'm sorry for families who have lost, but most people are fine. COVID's not a threat. Other good news. Look at the fact that Christians only got stronger after the global lockdown, after the global Grinches, you know, locked us out of our own churches. You know, it's like, it's like it is like the Grinch, isn't it? Now that I think about it. He wants to shut down Christmas, you know. He, he makes it so Christmas can't happen, and all the little people from Whoville ah, ooh, boy, boy, go out there and have Christmas anyway. <laughs> Grinch is like, hmm, what do I do now? That's what happened to Christians. Certainly happened to the, in the Catholic communities. Oh my gosh! Not only did everybody go back to the faith, but they went back to the traditional faith. They said enough of this novus nonsense where we don't even have an obligation. The churches are all locked, and they went back to the old fundamental, true Catholicism of the Catholic Latin Mass. Fantastic! My church is booming right now. At the same time, little nimrods like Tony Fauci have become a punchline. I don't see this guy as invincible. Do you? Bill Gates last week. Gets divorced out of nowhere. And the missus starts talking about these uh, unsettling little links between old Bill and Jeffrey Epstein. According to the New York Times, beginning in 2011, Gates met with Epstein on numerous occasions, including at least three times at Epstein's Manhattan townhouse and at least once staying late into the night. Gates emailing colleagues in 2011, his lifestyle is very different and kind of intriguing, although it would not work for me. In one day, the New York Times, the... USA Today, NBC News, all had stories putting the word Epstein and Bill Gates in the same sentence. <laughs> Something's up there, right? But in any case, Bill Gates' wife divorced him. Who saw that coming? By all accounts, his life is blown up. He's sitting in one of his trillion-dollar mansions by himself doing whatever a Bill Gates does. <laughs> He's by himself. Now, again, I didn't see this coming. Now, Klaus Schwab, talking about Klaus, why all this has been happening, Klaus isn't getting any younger, is he? He's pushing 90 years old, as is his dear friend, Pope Francis. While the patriotic movement that you defend, that you belong to, that you hold sacred now, it's becoming a youth movement. It's taking this country by storm. <laughs> you see, don't count on, don't count on these guys being able to pull this off because it's a mass only a crazy person would think they could pull off the domination of the entire world the great reset must we imagine crazy people friends and we're pro-life let's think about this too because we're pro-life because we're pro-family the future belongs to us exactly as donald trump standing on the floor of the united nations said the future belongs to us. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots. And then there's everything else that's going on. You know, people are waking up. Guys like Tucker Carlson dominating cable news. Rand Paul going all Rocky Balboa and that little twit Fauci again and again and again. And Fauci, I'm back for more, bam! I'm back for more, bam! Get knocked out by Rand Paul. It's fun to watch. You know, here's something you probably haven't heard of. More than 120 retired flag officers wrote an open letter the other day calling on all of us, all Americans, to rally and reject the nation's embrace of what they call a radical leftist agenda that's taken over this country. I'll put the link down below. And who signed this letter? 
all little insignificant people like Ronald Reagan's former National Security Advisor John Poindexter, former Deputy Undersecretary of Defense William Gerald Boykin, retired Army Brigadier General Donald Bolduc, among a lot of other very powerful guys signed this letter. Now, did you hear about this? Gee, I wonder why not. I'm surprised it wasn't all over Facebook. Oh, that's right. It would have been banned on Facebook. <laughs> Anti-science or whatever it would have been called. Dangerous to your health. <laughs> they don't want you to know about that sort of thing. That's happening all over the place. There's a civil war going on in France right now. I suppose you haven't heard about that either, where they're actually talking about civil war if that idiot Macron keeps on just turning his country over to God knows the first the highest bidder. It warns of a coming civil war. Inflammatory claims in an open letter signed by around 1,500 members of the military, including 25 retired generals, are causing a stir in France. The letter calls for action from the government. If nothing is done, laxity will continue to spread through our society, ultimately causing an explosion and the intervention of our active comrades in a perilous mission to protect our civilizational values. The left-wing leader of the France Unbowed Party has called it a coup attempt. But you didn't hear about that. So they don't want us to know about any of this. Because they don't want us to stand with those generals who wrote the letter. You know, they don't want us to stand with the good governors like DeSantis. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to stand with a good priest, and there are a lot of good priests out there too right now. Even some bishops are waking up, and they certainly don't want us to stand with the good cops. George Orwell's rough men who stand ready in the night to visit violence on those who would do us harm so that we can safely sleep in our beds. The American police officer, the good, patriotic, God-loving family man, the police, that we're supposed to just hate because they just want to get up in the morning Go out and kill black people. That's all they do. Nobody actually, that, nobody, that, that doesn't fit anybody. That, that's, not a, 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 that's a caricature of, of insanity that CNN invo invented. It's not a real person. It's not a real cop. Do you honestly think the left wants to reform law enforcement? <laughs> 60 years, 70 years ago, they came into the Catholic Church. They said they wanted to reform the Catholic Church too. And now uh, the Catholic Church has been decimated, it's been blown apart. They don't, want, they, don't, they don't want to reform law enforcement today. They want lawlessness. They want urban chaos. Because then ultimately, what do they get? The country itself, in a panic, calling for national and even international law enforcement just to restore order. You know what that's called? That's called the police state. That's what the defund the police thing is all about. They're going to defund the police. They're going to bring on a police state. You ready for that? That's what they want. I know you don't want it. I don't want it. I don't know anybody who wants it, but that's what they want. And because CNN is on their side, the impression is created that everyone wants that. Do you know anybody who wants that? No cops in the cities anymore? You want you to know anybody? I don't. And again, it's, 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 it's not real. None of this is real. It's theater. Because you know the truth. Homegrown, and yeah, of course, the stupid little caveats that you always have to drop in. Are there bad cops here and there? Of course there are. There are bad doctors, or bad, lots of bad lawyers, bad journalists, lots of people. It's part of the human condition. Yeah, there are some bad cops. But what you know to be true, what your experience bears out, is that homegrown sheriffs, police departments, <laughs> they're not the problem. And you know they're not the problem. You know what the problem is? The Soros-backed Marxists agitators posing as social justice warriors who are making it impossible for good police like this guy to do his job absolutely that's all i want is to humanize each other you know i'm tired of the vitriol, vitriol i'm tired of the demagoguery against police officers and it's so broad and it's also dangerous because as that's happening uh we have political figures who yeah. are uh, buying off on it you know i don't mind if joe on the corner on social media all day watching uh collages of cop hate videos uh it, it is upset but when we start hearing our politicians espousing the same rhetoric that's when it's time to be concerned and what that ends up doing is tie our, tying our hands over time right. and actually hurting people of color in some of the most marginalized communities uh that we we signed up to serve and protect as well. So you say, what are we going to do? <laughs> Something really easy. Don't you? I got a little a little store just down the road from me. If I go down there in the morning after a run or something, there's always two or three cops in there. 
I'll go in there and talk to those guys. Do the same in your neighborhood. Get to know your cops, you know? We've got a new series called The Good Cop Files. Really proud of that. I think we're going to try to put a, we're going to showcase a different cop, either alive or one who fall, who was, was killed in the line of duty. We're going to try to shed light on this. And right now, to kick that series off, we got a fantastic interview of Officer Chris Barca. I don't know this man, but I'd like to meet him someday, shake his hand, thank him for his service. He's a traditional Catholic, he's a lifelong cop, gets it absolutely right. He explains what really is going on in the streets of America from a cop's perspective. Check that out, download it, share it, whatever, and get to get the word out. I'm wearing this shirt right now. I'm not too big on t-shirts, I don't know if you can read that, Do we zoom in on that somehow or whatever. I'm wearing this shirt because this weekend, our uh, Remnant TV team will be running the National Police week 5k to honor the fallen cops and to support what i consider the last line of defense between us between our children our family safety security between all that and chaos the cops and there are a lot of good cops out there still most of them are good guys so get to know your local cops there's something we can do they grew up where you did they got kids too they their fathers and sometimes their grandfathers were were, were, were policemen you know, they're invested in your community, in other words, which is why George Soros <laughs> and his ilk want to get rid of them because they're a vital part of community organizing, you know, people taking care of themselves. That term community organizing is interesting, isn't it? The left use it, used it very well because of community organizing. The left sent one of their, their guys all the way to the White House. Why? Because it works. Now, where did the idea of community organizing come from? From us from the parish system, from churches. We, Christians, pioneered the idea of the Christian community going all the way back to the apostles, taking care of each other, disciples of our Lord, in the community, organizing to go out and spread Christianity to the four corners of the earth. We're the original community organizer. Let's go back to that because it works and because resistance is not futile. We need to organize. They're trying to silence, well, they're trying to polarize us. Polarization has been part of this thing from the beginning. Get everybody scared and sitting, on, sitting across from each other, not talking, afraid to speak. So they polarize and then they silence us. They silence our communities because they know what happens if we stand together at the local level and we speak out. You know what happens? Joe Biden runs out of time. And the Great Reset, dead on arrival. Just this week, again, Biden completely changes his tune on, on, on wearing masks. Why? Because of us. Because of you. Because of guys like Steve Bannon's war room. Because of Tucker Carlson. Name your favorite fighter out there. That little girl that we just played. Millions of Americans pushing back. Every single voice right now matters. You have the power. You can change this. Get out there. Joan of Arc, one girl. The guy in Tenement Square, one guy standing in front of a tank, of a tank, changed history. How many saints did the same thing on their own? They didn't wait for a huge group of people to do it. They just went out and did it. And we need to do the same thing. Don't back down. <laughs> Sophie Scholl. Now, she would have been 100 years old this week if the Nazis hadn't taken her out at 21 years old. She's a martyr, you know, for her country. Greater love than this no man hath or little girl hath than to lay down her life for her country. The Nazis established a police state that allowed them to hunt down any resistors or those who completely defied the Führer in his policies and politics. To do so, however, could see Swan being thrown into a concentration camp or even face execution. Today we look at an amazing but tragic story featuring Sophie Scholl, whose anti-Nazi political activism saw her in great danger and trouble, which resulted at the age of 21 in her execution. Now, if she were alive today, Sophie Scholl, Facebook would cancel her for the very same reasons that the Nazis beheaded her. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Facebook. You're doing a bang-up job. And why is that? Why, 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 why would she be canceled today? Because she wouldn't shut up about the truth. She wouldn't close her mouth. She didn't care. Truth was empowering. Truth set her free. And this little girl gave her life for truth. This is how the attitude that we must have, friends. Because the future then belongs to people like us. If we can get this into our heads, the future belongs to people like Sophie Scholl. You know, not to the all-powerful Nazis goose-stepping around Europe like idiots. It didn't belong to them. The future didn't belong to them. They lasted 11 years. 
And today, the future does not belong to the 80-year-old lunatics of Davos. We will see to that. Our children will see to that. And I really want to close tonight with a, just a short RTV clip. It's funny, I watched this thing. We made it last year, and I watched it. Re- I happened upon it recently, and I thought, man, since Trump got taken out, this video really hits home. We can see what we lost. We can see what we were fighting for then, before Trump was taken out, and what we need to fight for now. So we made it last year, but it drives home this point. And what we're fighting for, God, family, country, and freedom, is more powerful than anything the lunatics at Davos have or ever will have, friends. And they know it. It's like we just need to wake ourselves up to that. Go back to what works. Go back to what built civilization. <laughs> Let's watch this, this little video together now. Let's remember, you might be feeling alone, you might be feeling scared, but remember the mask mandate disappeared. There, the, the, we are making progress already. There's cracks over there on the other side. They're not sure they can pull this off. There's uncertainty, there's insecurity, there's chaos, there's divorce <laughs> even. Remember, we're not alone. We're in this war together. And in the end, with God's help, and if we stick together, we're going to win this war together. And I'm Michael Matt for Remnant TV. Thank you so much for listening. Keep the faith, and we'll see you next time. If you want freedom, take pride in your country. If you want democracy, hold on to your sovereignty. And if you want peace, love your nation. Gorbachev tear down this wall. Wise leaders always put the good of their own people and their own country first. The future does not belong to globalists. The future belongs to patriots.